Welcome to 15 Minutes of Real Estate. I'm your host, Drayton Nay. Let's get started. My favorite subject to talk about in real estate is home improvement. Everybody always has an opinion on what things you can do and what things you should do to improve the, the value of your home. And I'm in, I'm in Las Vegas. I live right outside of Las Vegas. And it really depends on where you live and what section of the country because why a pool here uh, is pretty valuable or can be valuable here in Las Vegas. In Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, uh, pools aren't that, that valuable. But what I can tell you is always valuable. And one of the, the, the main things I use, when I, because I know when someone's coming to look at a house, I want to give them a few impressions, a few things that they'll remember. So when they leave the house, they go, wow, that was, that, that one thing really stood out to me. I like this house. And one of the things I like to use a lot is I like to use the master closet. The master closet to me uh, needs to be something a little special because I don't know who walks into a master bedroom and doesn't first consider the shower and tub and then the closet. I mean, in some cases, people may even pick out the closet before anything else. So I think some of the best money you can spend when you're doing some updates to your home is definitely in the master closet because it, to have a nice organized closet, a professionally done nice organized closet definitely stands out. And another thing I like to do is, um, especially when I'm trying to update and get the most for my house, take a look at your faucets and your lighting, your faucets from your kitchen to your bathroom, uh, you know, if you have Home De Depot uh, faucets, it's probably not the best choice, especially when you want to have a fresh, updated look. So one of the things I think brings you back the most money is updating your faucets and your lighting. Up-to-date lighting and up-to-date faucets will really, you know, really bring out the value and, and the perspective in your home. It, it, does, it makes it so it doesn't look so dated. Because let me tell you something, uh, you walk into a house and you see certain light fixtures, they, they shoot you back 20 years in a heartbeat. So those are, those are a couple of things I really like to watch out for, and that's lighting and, and definitely the faucets. But let's talk about the kitchen, because one of the rules I have about the kitchen is, yeah, it's great to have the nice big island. Yeah, it's great to have the farm sink and everything else. I get it. I get it. It's nice to have those things. But don't ever forget about the appliances because basically what kitchens are about is kitchens are about the appliances. And let me tell you something. There's nothing worse than going into this beautiful home and seeing 20-year-old appliances. It, it, it just, it, it, you know, as a buyer, when I walk into a house, and I see 20-year-old appliances, I see money out of my pocket. So one of the best things you can obviously do is if your kitchen isn't up to date, update your kitchen and also the appliances. I think the appliances are extremely important. And the other thing I think brings back good value in a home is when you do something, if you have the availability to do it in your backyard, I think doing a, a rec center in your backyard, as far as when I say a rec center, a recreational area, I'm talking about an outdoor kitchen along with the fire pit. When you can combine those things and make your, your backyard functional, uh, you can get a lot of that money back and you can do it without spending a ton of money. So those are a few projects that I really like. And the other thing that I really like is flooring. Yeah, I I have to admit, folks, I don't like carpet at all. I mean, I am I am about as anti-carpet as you get. Because today there are so many other choices, so many other things that you can do with flooring. And the great thing about flooring is, is it can immediately bring your house up to 2023. 
because we all know with the wrong flooring, it can bring your house back to 1973. So <laughs> I, I, I think flooring is a, is a huge opportunity and something that should be considered probably up at the very top. You really should consider what type of flooring you have and and you know really pay attention to the look of your home the look of the floor and of course keeping the house freshly painted i can't tell you the difference in a house that has been freshly painted nothing worse than walking into a house and it just feels like you ever walk into a house and it feels like dead air you, you know what i mean dead it just means you know the air just feels stale and everything so yeah, have, having a great kitchen stands out. Having new lighting and new fixtures definitely will help your home. New flooring is huge. And I'm a big proponent of the backyard. And that's because you can do a really nice backyard without spending a ton of money. It's not that expensive, especially if you can do a lot of the work outside yourself. So... Those are a few things I'd like you to think about because we all know that uh, doing these little uh, projects cost a little bit of money. But in the end, if you do these particular projects, it could bring you back not only the amount of money that you spend, it could bring you even more money in the future. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think. And if you have a favorite at-home project that, that has succeeded for you, let me know in the comments what it is. The next thing I'd like to talk about is real estate agent commissions. Yeah, it's a, it's a really sore subject with me. <laughs> it's a really, because I've been railing against it for 20 years, maybe long, maybe 30 years, because I just feel the whole system is so unfair. It seems like everybody wants to go after the seller's money. And my, my belief is leave the seller's money alone. That's the seller's money. Leave it alone. He's the one that took the risk. He's the one that bought the house. Leave his money alone. But if you're not familiar with the case, you can Google the case. But basically what happened is in Missouri, uh, a, a jury went very quickly found that the commissions uh, that real estate agents charge, they conspired. Yeah, they conspired. Uh, committed an unlawful act and made their own clients pay more money than they should have. And look, I, I have railed against this forever because who thinks 6% is okay? Who thinks 6% of somebody's home's value? You mean to tell me I have a $500,000 house and I have to pay $30,000? $30,000 just to sell it? That seems crazy. I mean, think how much money $30,000 is. And that's how much I have to pay just to sell my house. And the way they do it is they literally force you. In order to go on to MLS, they force you to, to offer a buyer's agent. Because I want you to understand something. And this is what no one talks about. When you list your house with a real estate agent, that's all you're doing. That's it. That's all you've done. You're just listing your house. That's it. That listing agent isn't selling anything. In a wide majority of the cases, they're selling nothing. They're just simply listing your house. And did you know you could list your house? Did you know you could list it for about 299 bucks? Have you ever in your life had a real estate agent go, hey, you know, you can pay me 6% or $30,000 or you could just list it yourself for 299 bucks. Don't you always hear real estate agents say, well, I have a fiduciary responsibility. Well, if you have a fiduciary responsibility, don't you have a responsibility to tell your client that they could save about $29,800 if, if you did it yourself? Don't you think they have a responsibility to tell the client that? But no, they don't tell them that. They tell them, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this huge fee and then I'm going to dangle a huge bag of money and say, hey, somebody bring me a buyer. Somebody bring me a buyer, please, and I'll give you half my money. I, I'm sorry, but who does that make sense to? And how does that? how has that ever made sense to anybody? 
So it, it literally took a, a jury two hours to go, yeah, that's wrong. That's wrong. And that's why I've been, you know, basically walking around for the past week going, leave the seller's money alone. Leave the seller's money alone. It's their money. Stop taking their money. And that's why if you go to list your house, list it yourself. It's $299. And if you want to offer money to a buyer, offer it to the buyer. Don't offer it to a buyer's agent. Let the buyer figure out who he wants to give the money to. Does he want to put the money in his pocket? Does he want the money to go towards closing? What does he want the money for? But you don't have to give it to a buyer's agent. What for? Let, let the buyer decide what he's going to do with the money. So if you want to put $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 down to the, to the buyer, that's what I would do. But as far as ever setting side, aside money for a buyer's agent, nah, that's got nothing to do with you. You didn't hire him. You, you didn't meet him. You don't even know him. And that buyer's agent is working against you. Think about that for a moment. The buyer's agent is literally working against you. So why would you pay him anything? Uh, yeah. Again, if you're going to offer money, offer it to the actual person buying the house. And what they decide to do with it is on their own. Because that's who we have to really start reaching in all of this. You know, I'm a firm believer that you should just have a buyer's board. Literally, each city, each city across the United States, Las Vegas, Philadelphia, you know, Nashville, Houston, Miami, just have a buyer's board. And when you want to buy a house, just put, I want to buy a house this big, this many square feet, this many bedrooms. Here's my loan number. It's already all set. I'm all set. I'm all, I'm all approved for a half a million dollars. Or I'm going to buy a house half a million dollars cash, whatever the case might be. And just put it on a buyer's board and let all the people selling a house in that area go, hey, here's my house. Here's my house. I just think that makes, to me, a buyer's board makes a lot more sense. We don't need to know so much who's selling. We need to, the, the valuable thing is to know who's buying, who's got the money to buy. And think about it. If you had a buyer's board, you know. Think about if I'm a, I'm a buyer and I want to buy in 89052, now everybody that has meets my cr criteria in 89052 is hitting me up. They're contacting me saying, come see my house. I got a great house for you. Come see my house. It just seems like, I don't know, it just seems like a, a natural progression and, and the place we should be going to in the future. Because in the future, what we don't need are real estate salespeople. They're in the middle of a transaction for no reason. If you need to list your house, look, you've come to the right spot. I can give you all the information you need to list and sell your house. And I do it without charging you a dime. You can learn how to do it right here on this channel. Step by step by step. That's why you're here. That's why you need to subscribe. You need to, sus to subscribe to this channel right now. Because I'm going to constantly give you all the information. Whether you're looking to buy or sell, you're going to get all the information you need right here. And like I said, does it look like I have any fancy things going on? No. I'm just going to give you the basic information. The information you need that could make a huge difference to you. So once again, please subscribe. Thank you for joining me here at Real Estate for 15 Minutes. I appreciate you being here. Remember, we have a great show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's right. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. I'm going to be right here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, giving you all the news you need, all the information you need, whether you're thinking about buying or selling. Thanks a lot. See you again soon.